so good to see you on this big Leo full moon roar, right? This is the time of power and what is right use of power and leadership and all those subjects of, um, of, of being in power with in, in our own lives over ourselves in our world around us, how power affects us, how how we wield it. You know, I love the story, you know, about samurai and that one of my dear friends was samurai <laughs> or her family went back hundreds of, you know, years. Um, like I, I want to say like a thousand years, if that, but it was a long time and she was pure samurai. And she tells the story of that they, in, in that culture, that it, when you're taught to use your sword, which is a big one, <laughs> right, that you learn how to wield power. And that in a sense, it is a sort of a shame if you actually have to use your sword, right? Anything before, everything before the sword. And so in life, we're always learning about our own power and powerlessness, right? Because those things always, these pairs of opposites come together. This power, using power wisely and correctly. So if you have power, but you don't know you have power, you could accidentally off with their head, right? Because you don't know how to use your sword. So it's very important to know your power, whatever it is. It might be your heart. It might be the love that you share. It might be your words. It might be your tone of voice. It might be your touch. It might be your mind, right? It can be whatever it is, your, your skills, your art, your heart. And so we're in that Leo full moon where we can really work with this energy of what is, what is right use of power, what is courage, right, at a time in these days where courage is really important for us. And so, welcome <laughs> to this full moon in Leo and solar Aquarius. I just got off the meditation mount and we, the emphasis there is on the Aquarian side, the opposite side, and I spoke about synthesis there and how whenever we're working with full moon energy, the, the the potential is to be able to, to learn and understand by the yin and yang of something what something actually even is. And so by itself and its opposite, right? By itself and its opposite, you learn where the middle is. You learn what something means. I was just talking to a, a, one of my clients about that idea of the solstice, right? When we choose our solstice word, we work with it for a whole year right? A whole year. So we're starting from December 21st to December 21st. That whole year we're working with a word, one word, one phrase that the soul offers in Meditation Deep. And then you get to learn that word, which is if it's light, then guess what else you're going to learn about? <laughs> right? Darkness. It has to be. Shadow and light, right? Love and not love. And so in the real understanding, as you grow into your understanding for a whole year's worth of spiritual work that the soul offers you, you hit the wall at some point, always, where it's not that at all, it's the other side of it. And it's really important to understand the other side of something in order to really understand what it even means. And so full moon, right? Leo, opposite sign, Aquarius, right? Leo, heart. Aquarius head, right? Pure mind, pure heart, pure mind. And so one of the things we talk about in esoterics a lot is how do you awaken, this is really beautiful and powerful, how do you awaken the mind of heart, the mind of heart, and open the heart of mind? And when you start to move through heart, basically, because we're talking about love now, now we're talking about capital L love, whenever I say love, that high love, higher love, you begin to discern, to understand, to, with depth, 
right, with consciousness, with awareness, that things are much more than they appear to be. And when someone says, you know, that they're fine, that may be true or not so. And in fact, it's probably not because what does fine even mean, right? So, so there's so much more to it than that, right? And you begin to look through eyes that are, you know, hearing, <laughs> and ears that are seeing, right? And hands that are, that are feeling and seeing and hearing. It's like your whole body becomes a awakened so that, and I think of it when I'm working, you know, and I'm an empath, and I'm psychic, I suppose, but I'm certainly an empath, that my whole body is hearing, not just my ears, not just my eyes. <laughs> and, you know, and you think of that, can eyes hear? And I would say yes. <laughs> can ears see? Yes, I would say yes. And can your skin sense, feel, see, hear, all the senses? Can your whole body, right? It's this huge thrum of awareness that comes through the body when we're not so addicted to thinking our way through everything, right? And so there's such an emphasis in our culture and just in our times these days where there's so much emphasis on thinking and logic. And it cannot be in your intuition and in your logic at the same time. They can interweave, they can interact, but intuition happens in the moment. Intuition happens in the present moment only. If you're in the past or the future, you don't have intuition in these places, it's impossible. If you're in regret, guilt, or anxiety, stress, worrying about what will happen, what if, right? There's no intuition here at all. And so then we're thrown back into logic as our only tool. And there's so much more available to use than just that. Heart of mind, mind of heart, right? How do you awaken the heart chakra? How do you awaken the head center, right? And feel the through line from heart to heart to heart of soul, right? This is the directest, most direct line to get to wisdom comes through the heart. Not the logical mind, which is needed, is limited though, of what it can perceive or understand. It can only understand what it can make sense of. And so many things are beyond our seeing, right? Beyond what we can see with our eyes. And so it brings me to the idea of energy and vibration, right? That we're all, everything, 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 everything is energy, period, everything. And if you're sensitive, you start to be able to feel energy more, well, as you're sensitive, more and more and more and more. And as you tune your instrument, meaning your body, mind, heart, self, right? You are able to read energy better and better, especially when you learn to not take it personally. <laughs> it's just energy, right? Energy is energy. So how do you work with energy? This is, this is the conversation all the time in the spiritual approach, is how do you work with the energy that you're sensing without making it about yourself or reacting or trying to fix it or change it, but accept it, that things are what they are. And we, and our opportunity, like Dalai Lama, I've been do, using this teaching a lot lately, which is his simple, beautiful, profound answer is what is happiness? Happiness is acceptance. And that's a mind blower for Western brains, right? Well, that can't be, I don't want to accept this. But that's where the love is. And that's where the present is. And in your present is your point of power. And in that point of power, you are creative. You can do anything. You can do any anything. So, so the practice is, in all spiritual work is to the practice of presence, like right here, right now, right here, right now, right here, right now, you, right here, right now, me, right? That we really are moment by moment by moment. And what happens is that you'll hear with bigger ears, with color in them, you know? 
you'll you'll you, all of your senses will be heightened and you'll hear tonight what you need to hear tonight because it's in there and it might be a sentence it might be a word it might be a, a sound right the, it could be a and that sound because it's full of om right the exhalation is the om of the universe right of your universe that that might be the thing that you needed to realign to rebalance and regroup for this next month for this next period that we're moving through which is super 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 dynamic right as you all know so we're living in very very powerful times right now as everybody knows and we're not helpless and we're not alone and there's all of us and there's all of us plus more all of us that are out there that are working in working by heart working by heart and when you work by heart you automatically are connected with other heart people if you are walking around at target <laughs> or down the street you can you will be attracted to other heart people they're everywhere right and so when we get to go out into the into the world we realize this is a very big powerful potent group of conscious souls that are on the planet right now more than ever 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 <laughs> right and so as this light is increasing going back to yin and yang so is shadow increasing and so here we are at that at that pinnacle point right the the fourth ray energy of right that that it harmon harmony through conflict right it's the balance point to be able to create that tension where it holds the two points and doesn't pop into one side or pop into the other but that it balances it perfectly that's what fourth ray energy does right and so we're acting like fourth ray all of us as when we meditate we're helping to balance and condition the incoming and energies that are coming down and the energies that are on the planet right now in all their glory. And they, everything is moving right now with so much power and so much uh, change, right? So that brings me to this. So I'm, gonna sh I'm just going to share the chart because a lot of you know, uh, some of you know astrology. You know, a lot of you know I'm an, a, a spiritual astrologer. Um, so let me just share the chart. So here's the chart for this full moon. This is based on LA time, but the chart will look the same. It'll just change in direction. Um, but the angles that you're seeing, this will all stay the same. And so what we've got here right now, here's the sun in Aquarius, 16 Aquarius. Here's the moon in Leo, full moon in Leo. And whenever the moon is full, it is always astronomically opposed the sun. That's exactly what it looks like. And exactly at the minute of 16 Aquarius 40, 16 Leo 40 is the exact time of the full moon, which is actually tomorrow at 1020 a.m. So you know how I post these the next day, usually. You can watch them on YouTube again, um, if, or for the first, if you didn't get to be here live, you can go to YouTube and watch them there. Um, at the exact time, like tomorrow will be at 1029 AM. You could join in again if you like, or you can share it with someone. So it's good, of course, the power is in the group energy, right? So it's always very powerful to meditate together you know, as we are right now. But even when you listen to it later, you can connect to that energy because we made it. We made that energy. We already created it. So you're just kind of tipping in like you're, think of it like uh, jumping on a merry-go-round <laughs> that's already going. <laughs> you get to go too. And so what we've got going here energetically, a bunch of stuff, but I'm just going to talk about the main, main thing, which is this really tight T-square sun, moon, Uranus. So woof, right? That's change, 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 change. There's no getting around it. If push comes to shove. We do have to change. We do have to make the movement. We do get to get to because it's in it's in Taurus. So it's about real life, you know, that w these fixed signs, very strong, very stubborn, kind of slow to change. It's like 
they slow to change, but when they do, it's like, kunk! <laughs> you know, it's like they move like a tectonic plate or something, you know? So it's powerful when it happens. So a lot of real change is happening. Meanwhile, sun's trining Mars, which helps and just gives it energy. And uh, Mercury is sextiling Neptune, inspired meditation. You're meditating here. This is good. This will help. And then Uranus is trining, uh, se uh, sextiling uh, Venus, which is... Oh, gosh, that's really beautiful. That's such a good, that's such a nice aspect. It's like inspiration and change that is from the heart that you need and that is right for you right now. So, but the main thing right now is, of course, the full moon with this T-square to Uranus, which is it's going to happen. Push does come to shove, you know, in a sense. But like in all things, the more that we move in the flow, of something and we don't resist it the quieter softer easier is the is the experience when we're going no not that <laughs> right the more uh, we feel the current against the stream because we're not trusting the stream right we think we need to go a different way the ego thinks it wants to go a different way the ego always wants to do what it wants to do you know so we're always keeping that ego in check and teaching what what I call it is it to have the ego on a sit stay, right? <laughs> like you teach it to do that really sit stay so that you can take it to the restaurant, <laughs> you know, or you could be out in the world with people because the the ego is not just running around you know yapping or you know biting people's legs. It is it's on a sit stay. It's like a seeing eye dog or something. It's it's it is. It's an asp the self becomes aspirational because the ego is in check instead of running and driving into walls and off cliffs out of its, you know, need to protect itself, etc. So this is a powerful, powerful full moon. And it's kind of like can't you can't get around it you can't trick it you, this this particular full moon and so what i would just recommend if you want to have your um authentic radical change which is what uranus is about <laughs> then you know i resist nothing right which is one of my favorite meditations i offer i resist nothing everything's god everything's love everything's for the higher good whether we think it is or not and as we start to live this more and more, you start to know this more and more. Because at first it's just an idea that sounds interesting or even maybe controversial. <laughs> but it is still true. And the more as you live it, you start to see the truth of it because truth is true. That's how you know it is, is because no matter which way you turn truth, it's still true. Right? So that's the power of this time. And the other thing I wanted to just, oh, <laughs> and so the, I was going to title this um, The Action of Love, right? Because it's Leo, courage, you know, how do you love through all the things that are happening in your life right now and in the world right now? How do we love through that? But then I called it instead The Hammer of Change. <laughs> And I thought that was funny because it's sort of like if you don't get it the, the little nudgy way, don't worry, there's a big baseball bat that's right behind that that'll help you make that movement. So I recommend doing it the softer way to move the action of love versus the hammer of change. But we're going to probably see some hammers of change, you know, around in the world. As you look out, you know, at different places and different situations that you're aware of, things are kind of going hard. And it doesn't have to be for us, you know. Um, when you meditate, you're conditioning energy before it lands on the ground. And what I've noticed as a meditator of, you know, all my life, basically, is that we, we get things kind of first because we're reaching for it all the time. We're constantly in this up, moving up, holding, uplifting, touching the soul, reaching and raising our vibration up. So we're always going, you know, ready, bring it, <laughs> I'm ready down here, right? And then, of course, it comes to us because we're ready and willing. We have free will. So the energy comes, whoosh, you know, through. And we're sort of the first touch, the first point of contact with that new energy, whatever that energy is. And then we condition it. How do we condition it? Through our heart chakra, 
not our head. It's through the heart chakra that is the conditioner, right? And it starts to move that energy and then it has a reciprocal point in the heart of mind, the mind of heart, and they make that connection and then you are able to kind of use that energy, translate that energy, making it usable energy in the world. And so it's really important because what I've noticed is there's a lag. So as I'm hit, feeling those, that first hit, wham, you know, we're getting a hit of energy, then it seems it takes about, seems like anywhere, well, it used to take like months before it would hit the group, the outer group, or the group, the great, greater group, let's call it. But now it's taking like days, so it's faster. Everything's faster. And we've all been noticing that for a long, long time, that things are definitely just moving faster. So people are getting it, you know, and if your instrument's not tuned, it's when big blasts of energy come in, it can kind of hurt the mechanics, in a sense, of the instrument, you know? And so you have to be mindful about keep tuning your instrument. Meditation is tuning your instrument. That's what we're doing. And we're tuning it to not to ourselves, well, we're to ourself, also ourselves, but it's tuning to our soul, which is the translating device for that greater energy. And so we're connecting to all that line of light all the way up, right? And we're tuning ourselves to that all the time. So our instrument is ready to play, right, any time. And so that's why you need to do sort of the work you know, the heavy lifting or the weight lifting or the all the time to practice and keep your strength so that you're not, you know, uh, surprised by energy. You can see energy coming a mile away. Really. You really can. Way before it happens. Things are very predictable. Very easy to see actually how things are rolling and how things are coming down and how they're going to come down because it's in that first breath, right? When we take a breath towards an idea, when we even just think the idea, we're already aligned with it in a certain way and the outcome of that becomes very predictable. It's going to match. And so this awareness of vibration and of the vibration that you're holding and raising your vibration in that way that is is ready and willing to align to higher energy helps the world because as you do that it doesn't just affect you it affects everybody in your house it affects everybody that lives near you and I really believe it affects everyone all the time you know, and so and when a bunch of us are meditating together, you can imagine the power of that. And so I, I wanted to show this little video. This is a uh, metal plate with filings on it, little, little salt. I think it is just salt. And what was happening there, I'm talking over this because there, I took the sound out because it so, gets so high it hurts your ears. But it starts out really low and it gets higher and higher and higher frequency vibration. And what you're seeing here are patterns forming and changing from the sound. So the sound is creating sacred geometries. It is creating patterns and energy. And you can see this kind of miraculous, you know, trying to just working with this energy that is us, right? So there's 70 of us here, right? So we're creating a sacred geometry right here, right now. We're creating a note as our consciousness, consciousnesses touch that creates a sound, that creates a vibration, that creates a sacred geometry. So you can really see in this little visual, um, and you can do this at home, you know, if you have a plate, um, got to be a uh, electric, electrified plate, and then you play a note. You don't even need it to be electrified, actually. I saw another version of this where they were using a violin bow on metal, and it was making patterns on, on the metal. It's just incredible. And it's such a way to see because you can't see energy, really. But yes, you can. <laughs> and that's one way. But you can definitely feel energy right? And it's, what's the difference? And, bec and because we can't see it with our eyes sometimes, we don't trust it. We trust our eyes, but we don't trust the energy. And the energy, people that are sensory perceptive, that energy is as if eyes. 
So why would you ignore what you're seeing, right? Seeing, third eye seeing. Why would you not use that as information that if something's off, it's off? And if something's right, it's right. And you know, but the minute that the brain gets involved and it starts to say, well, but I don't, you know, I don't want to do that. <laughs> or I don't, you know, what we start arguing with the brain starts to create a logic cue about it that either is either in resistance because it might be feel hard or in resistance because we just don't want to. So many ways of resistance about this. But when we have resistance, then we're, we go into the head and it starts taking apart our intuition. That's instant. Intuition is instant. It's not something that it comes to you or it comes through many, many, many thoughts. It comes instantly, just like that. If I wanted to, I could go through everybody here and tell you something. You know, people I've never met. And it's not, that's energy. That's not, it's just energy. And it's very obvious, actually, energy right? You could too, right? As you develop that sense and you begin to trust that sense. But remember, intuition is in the present. So we are responsible for our vibration. And even though we can't see the vibration, we can definitely sense the vibration. If you're feeling down, you're down. <laughs> it's that simple in a way, right? If you're feeling high, what is that? I feel high. High vibration. You know, we used to say something was uh, bad vibrations, right? We, as in the 60s, we would make that something had bad vibes. You know, we, we all knew what that meant. And it's the, it, it is, we had even language around it because it was that time when the 60s, when East and West were merging. And so all these ideas were coming into our very black and white, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight kind of Western world perspective meets like a storm, right? When the two air airs come together, you get a storm. Two cross air air atmospheres, I should say, um, come together. It can create rain, right? But you meet this sort of um, Western meets Eastern, and this this explosion really of thought came from it, both directions. And it was a very powerful time for the world because we, we leapt forward, right? We leapt forward in a lot of ways and a lot of consciousness. So, um, so we have to be discerning about energy. We have to trust our energy and trust energy when we feel energy. And, and how you do that is in the moment, in the present, in the moment. When you think about energy, you try to analyze the energy, it'll take you off in a way. It'll be less and less and less accurate. <laughs> so think about that. Like, wow, right? So, so all of this is so how do you do that is, so, is only is sort of a simple thing, except it's not simple at all, is how do you stay in the present? You know, because we're all the time thinking, oh, I wish I'd said that, or how come they don't like me, or, you know, we're reviewing everything all the time, or we're in jumping into the future going, I hope this doesn't happen, I hope that doesn't happen. So all these things that are using up a lot of airspace <laughs> in our mind take, are taking up a lot of our energy time, and in between of that, despite that, we still get intuition, despite all that, because that's how powerful intuition is. But imagine if you actually create space for it. So when we meditate, we're creating space for that. So you can get an insight. You could have a, 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 a life-changing insight now. So I'm always liking that possibility. <laughs> and one of the things I teach is um, miracles happen, miracles, which don't happen very much. But if a miracle could happen or does happen, it's because there's zero resistance. And so my phrase is, resistance creates the experience of time and suffering. <laughs> right? So if there's no resistance, it's almost like thinking, and it is, thinking that it is. But that's almost impossible because we have so much resistance can't do that, I'm too old, I'm too young, I don't have enough money, I didn't go to school long enough, I went to school too long. 
know, whatever, it's always something, right? We're always just in resistance to ourselves. We forget love. And going back to that Dalai Lama statement of happiness is acceptance, right? Acceptance is no resistance. That's another way to say that. It doesn't resist. It says, that is, this is, right? It's not saying it should be different. That's resistance. And so it's a practice, of course, and I teach this all day long, all night long, all my life long, as long as I've been on this planet, I've been teaching these ideas because they work, they're true, and they're hard to do, right? They're not easy. They're easy to say and hard to do because they, they just are. And so, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. And so on this Leo full moon, all heart, you know, can you have the courage to be in the present? Can you have the courage to, to be in the vulnerability? Can you, you know, do you have the, isn't that funny to have the courage to be vulnerable? <laughs> right? So that's a good way to say it. How do you just have courage about your life, about what you're here for, about what, how you could make it even better? How can you help? Uh, what is help? You know, there's so many layers to this, but all the answers come in the moment. So when in doubt, get present again and then begin to know. And then the trick is to not question and second guess everything that you're knowing. So I make a big distinction between knowing something and thinking something. Right? And if I have an opinion about something, that's a thinking. And I do have opinions about things. I really, really, really love Mexican food. <laughs> You know, and I love sushi and I love, those are my opinions, those are my preferences. Those aren't, those aren't better than anything else because everything else is also wonderful. But those, that's, my, that's my opinion or it's my preference. But knowings are true, different than thinkings and opinions and preferences. So if you want to know something true, you want to, re, in a way, remember what you already know. Right? You go into a meditation and you begin to remember. Remember know, I call it. Because remember knowing, it's past, present, future. It's all at once. Right? So, I know those are kind of, I don't, I was sort of abstract today in this conversation, but I really wanted to share this idea again about intuition and presence, at least that, and to be brave in these times where when we're changing because change is happening everywhere all around us not to panic not to take anything personally work with the energy be adaptive to the energies right use the energies if change is, is happening let the change happen trust it trust your life trust it you know we lose the job doesn't might be the best thing that ever happened you know what I mean? Like you've got to just trust that and if you're a meditator, you can trust your life because you're already lined up in the first place. So even things that you seem to lose are making space for something else to open. And all those sayings we hear, you know, they all sound sort of trite, but they're powerful and true. But living them, living them, breathing them, being them is the practice. And it's a lifelong practice that never changes in its intentionality or it's in a way effort but I don't want to you know in yoga we call it a relaxed effort a relaxed effort not not trying to kill the pose not trying to kill the asana we're trying to we're we're in relationship with we're dancing with it we're discovering ourselves through the pose through the asana or through the meditation so I offer no resistance, trusting life, which is maybe the best thing I could ever tell you. Trust your life, I mean, not somebody else's, yours. Trust the way things flow, that there's a reason for all of it. And if I were talking to each of you, I would be telling you why, and, you, and we'd be going, wow, that's so true. <laughs> but it's a reframe, right, of how we maybe look at something, oh, I should have this, and because I didn't do that, then I you know, I can't do this. That's not true. Anything can be. So in that Leo time, a full moon in Leo, you know, have the courage, the presence, the power, 
and right leadership of self, you know, to give yourself good advice, which is done from, from your intuition, better than brain. Then you add your mind into it and you can start to do very complex things. But first the practice, the harder practice is to stay present. So when we do our meditation in a moment, you know, I'm going to start with that anyway, at least. And we'll open into that space to allow something maybe to grow. I always think these meditations, especially when it's a group like this, there's a lot of meditators here. There's a lot of practice meditators here. There's some lots of meditators that are, this is their first time they ever meditated. Okay, so there's everything happening in this group, right? And you, if it's the first time, you, you're the, in the fortunate position of having beginner's mind. <laughs> the fortunate position of beginner's mind. Right. And you get to come in that like, ooh, you know, where when you're practiced more, you can get kind of jaded. Right. And then this happens and then that happens. And then we do these three breaths and then that happens. And you kind of lose the life and the liveliness of the connection that is in the now and the now and the now and the now. So let something happen for you tonight that it's always possible like really something happened where you get an insight or you get a healing or something where there's a takeaway that's bigger than just the meditation itself the meditation just is a little platform to stand on to pull down what it, your soul wants to give you right now in your life, wants you to know, wants you to feel, wants you to remember, wants you to try, wants you to sense, whatever it is, that it could be just, if there's no resistance, it is given. It's just given. So that's the thought. So when you're ready to, let's go. We have, I have my candle here. You don't need to light a candle. If you have one, you can. Um, it's symbolic. And uh, you can always just light a candle in your mind, which is the exact same thing. I'm using this symbolically so you can see it. And you may have one too, and then you can see it. And I can see some of yours, <laughs> which is nice. Yeah, thank you, Terry. <laughs> saw that yeah yeah so you know welcome everybody from everywhere there's people from everywhere here today in Tokyo London New York San Francisco right um, Tulsa Oklahoma you know and the hills of of Chatsworth you know Venice Beach you know there's just everything all kinds of connections here which makes a grid and talk about energy if you think about that metal plate you know we've got energy across the planet and it makes even a bigger sacred geometry when it's moved through time and space right it gets a bigger our star our geometry becomes more complex and bigger over the planet and so the light that we create in the meditation becomes an offering because that energy is touching it. It's like a, like a matrix grid that goes around the planet that if, if anyone is needing or thinking of, even thinking of looking up in a sense, they can touch it because it's right there like ripe fruit. They can touch that energy and have it. And they might not know where it came from or anything, but it could be an answer to their prayers or an answer to their pain. You know, just because we're meditating and and not just us, but many millions more around the planet because the full moon is our clock. So we can just point up and there it is. And that's we can all know when to meditate, you know, together if you wanted to. You could meditate together with millions of people across the planet by just knowing that the full moon is now. So let's go. So when you're ready to set yourself, settle yourself. <laughs> Just be grateful that you have a space like this to do this in. And that you can do it out of your house. Like how cool is that? Or out of your car or from your boat or wherever you are. That we get to have this technology, this, this opportunity, this meditation to join from wherever we are around the world 
and balance yourself with your breath inhaling and exhaling gently letting yourself calm into this time and space present practicing presence and gently touch your heart chakra mentally or literally feel your heart open and heart available heart receptive heart is the circulatory system the heart organ circulates right but the heart chakra does the same thing it circulates energy so as you become aware of the heart you feel breathing gently through the heart center feel your heart open and all the little petals of your rose or of your peony or of your lotus open 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 and then you gently sense all these open hearts heart to heart connect and feel the body settle as the heart opens as you practice presence being here now be here now Ramdas be here now be here now be here now be here now and feel the space open within you as you send a line of light from the heart chakra up into the head center into the heart of mind into the cave center and feel the head center the cave open like it's illuminated with light illuminated by violet illuminated illuminated by awareness and becoming present in this place becoming gently aware of the overlighting soul and feel that soul presence that is always there whether we realize it or not letting that soul presence be known feel the link up the sinking up self with soul I and the soul are one Om I and the soul are one Om. And I'm going to take us deeper now. With the count in, I call it. This I just developed this around the solstice just before. And just follow the word ideas without attaching to any of them. And let it take you deeper. Star 
sky, earth, ocean, land, mountain, tree, all beings, place, body, self, soul, home. Deeper still, star, sky, earth, ocean, land, mountain, tree, all beings, place, body, self, soul, om. These are archetypes of everything. Deeper still, last time, soul, star, sky, earth, ocean, land, mountain, tree, all beings, body, self, soul, Om. Let yourself move into the silence. Let yourself awaken into the presence. Let yourself awaken in the light. What is to be known now? Let yourself have a healing on this full moon. Let it be a forgiveness or a re-understanding
or a physical healing, a course correction, a realization. And whether your mind has put a word to it or not, or thought form around it or not, allow yourself availability, the availability to know this in right timing. Now, tonight, in a dream, when you awaken, whenever it is, trust your life, trust your soul's timing. And then just gently now, use your breath to harmonize this into your body being, becoming one with it. Don't need to understand with the mind so much right now. Let it be impressionistic. Let it be like spiritual medicine, time released. And then use your breath to blend all of this into self, as above, so below. As above, so below. Om. Good, until it starts to feel natural to transition out of this meditation when you're ready to. and leave this open for a, a long while. So if you feel to stay in meditation, just do. You're welcome to. Thank you for being here for this meditation. It's always my, feels like my privilege. share this with you and you to share it with me. The next full moon is March 7th, so we'll probably do it the day before. And I hope to see you there. <laughs> so thank you everyone. I'll see you next time.